so it's always fun to share share uh, share work. Um, so tonight, I'd, I'd like to share with you uh, some work I've been doing on these um, five-based strobe animated sculptures, and um, I'm going to give you a little peek of, of sort of the behavior that I that I discovered, and then show you how how that came about, or what what sort of led up to that. The um, when I say five base spiral packing or, or, or animated sculptures, this is an example of a five based spiral packing. And, um, and by five based, I mean it's based on something called the golden angle um, or the golden ratio as it manifests as an angle, about 137 and a half degrees. And it ends up, if you make a packing using uh, uh, phi, you end up with spirals like this, uh, where the number of spirals in each direction are Fibonacci numbers. And, but, but the other, the surprising thing was that not only is that the case, but that if you spin this and um, strobe it once every 137 degrees, you get the impression of an animation. So I'm gonna just right now show you what this looks like if I just spin that disc and run a strobe light on it that, that beats one per, one per uh, 137 degrees rotation. So now you see that it appears to be sort of expanding out. It's also kind of doing a rotation, but that's just due to inaccuracies. But the fundamental thing is that if you look at any one diamond on there, you'll notice that it's working its way um, larger and out around the, around the perimeter. And this is the basis uh, for everything I'm, I'm going to show you tonight. Um, all, all the different shapes and, 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 and sizes are all based on this fundamental geometry. <clears throat> so what is it about this geometry, or, or let, let's look at this geometry. Well, as I mentioned, this is, um, this is something, well, I don't know if I did mention, this is something that's used in nature, actually, in a lot of uh, plant forms for things as, as varied as sunflower heads, various kinds of flowers, pine cones. Um, and if you were to look at each of these, you would find that the number of spirals um, is always a Fibonacci number. Fibonacci number is, uh, is part of the Fibonacci series, which is a series formed by starting with one and one, and then adding the last two elements in the series to get the next element. So one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus three is five, three plus five is eight, eight plus five is 13, and so on. And so um, in this case, for instance, you would see that there are eight and 13 spirals, a very common number actually, two neighboring Fibonacci numbers. Uh, cactus, cactus, uh, cacti and very many succulents have the same configuration. Here's another example of a succulent that has it. So uh, let's, let's actually look at this particular succulent at, at how that sort of five-based um, construction occurs. Well, it's easy to see where the center of this is, and, in, and that, in a sense, is the newest part of the plant, right? That's where the next, the next leaf is about to come out. The, the leaf that came out just before that, I'm going to label one. And you see it there, it's slightly down to the right. The leaf, it's pretty easy to see, uh, without knowing anything about how this is ordered, that the next closest leaf in is that one, right? Um, and maybe it's also pretty obvious that the next one is, is there. It starts to get harder to see where the next one would be, but if you'll uh, trust me for a moment and just go counterclockwise 137 degrees each time, you'll find that, that we get to the next leaf. So you might be able to guess where four would be. And it's, I hope that's what you guessed. And, um, and what we find is that if you move around, if I keep going out 137.5 degrees, it's actually an irrational number, so it's, it's, it goes on and on, but it's roughly 137.5. We keep on um, running into the next note, the next leaf in the sequence. And that's, um, that's what I mean by a five-based um, spiral uh, packing. And, and this occurs in many plant forms in nature, and, and one of the reasons um, theorized, at least, about why, why this is the case is that it's been shown mathematically to minimize overlap. If you're, if you're putting leaves on a stem and your algorithm is just to put out a leaf and then rotate some out and put out a leaf and then repeat, this is the ideal number. It absolutely minimizes overlap, and since leaves are solar collectors, that would seem a, a, a good strategy. But it's also a very good strategy for packing things tightly. It almost sounds like a counter, like a reverse notion in certain, if, if, if in terms of displaying leaves to make their, if, if so on, on the one hand, it, it, it makes leaves not overlap, but on the other hand, if you're packing seeds, say in a, in a, in a flower head, it actually packs them very efficiently and densely in a circular fashion. So it ends up that that ratio, uh, that 137.5 to the larger angle, 222.5, is about 0.618, which is uh, which is such a special number 
that it's actually been given a, a Greek letter, phi. Uh, it's also often talked about the reverse of that, the, the inverse of it, which is 1.618. Uh, but they're both, that, that's large phi, little phi is, is 0 0.618. And the, um, that ratio is the one and only one ratio where if you were to say draw two line segments, and this was the smaller and this is the larger, it's the only ratio where the smaller is, the to, is to the larger as the larger is to the whole. That's called the golden ratio. And this is, this is a, a rotational manifestation of the golden ratio, called the golden angle, generally. <clears throat> so I, uh, I got very interested about 10 years or so, 10 years ago or so, in making um, these phi-based uh, spiral packings. And I had access to a laser cutter, which allowed me to do things very accurately, which was very convenient. And so I started to make these tilings, in this case a kind of interlocking puzzle. And because of the phi base nature, it ends up, as you see, with eight spirals in one direction and 13 spirals in the other direction. And it's a, it's a, a kind of a reversal, it's a, insofar as it is a jigsaw puzzle, it's a kind of reversal, uh, it seems to me, of a standard jigsaw puzzle. If you think of a standard jigsaw puzzle, it's characterized by every piece being this, a different shape, but being about the same size. In this case, every piece is the same shape, but a different size. In mathematical terms, the pieces are all similar. And this is manifest, this is demonstrating that. You can see that they're all similar, and you can see that they're not congruent, that they're actually a progression of sizes. And although it may have looked random as they were jumping off, they were actually each being removed or added in, uh, by rotating the golden angle in each case. And the, su the, the surprising thing I found is that this kind of strangely crenulated shape if I always take the largest piece off and rotate it by 137 degrees, the puzzle doesn't change shape. It just seems to shrink. And if you follow one of those puzzle pieces in, in the puzzle, it looks like it's actually just moving in toward the puzzle. But that's not actually the same piece shrinking. It's actually you're seeing different pieces um, uh, due to rotation. This is, something, this is an animation I made, oh my gosh, maybe eight years ago. Um, and uh, for for the purposes of demonstrating this sort of similarity phenomenon. And had I been a little more clever, I, I should have realized this was the seed for the animation ability uh, for, the, for Blooms, what I'm going to be showing you. Because basically, it's a rotation and um, rotating by the golden angle and, uh, and, and, and sort of taking a picture, in this case, animating a frame. You get this animated effect. But it took me a little while to sort of think, recognize that potential. Now, that animation I first showed you at the very beginning has a certain relationship to uh, other animation devices, um, uh, often called zoetropes, is sort of the broad category, although there's, there's different subsets of them as well. And um, zoetropes can be operated in a number of ways. Uh, this one is a zoetrope that's designed to be operated where you actually would hold this up to a mirror and spin it around, and, and you'd be looking through this, those slits in there, and in the mirror you'd see an animation. So the slit provides a kind of the strobe effect. Uh, but you could also do it just by using a strobe light and spinning it in, in synchronization. But the thing I want to point out here um, is that in a, in a zoetrope, in, in basically all zoetropes I've ever seen, the, the frames are neighbors. In other words, <coughs> the sequential frames are neighbors. In other words, the next frame in time is also the neighbor in space. And that seems like a, kind of a silly, obvious thing to say, right? But, but, the, but I, I mention that because that's not going to be the case with blooms. So as you go around here, you see, you see f for frame, and f minus 1 is the frame before, and f <coughs> plus 1 is the frame ahead of it. And on the right, we see it being animated that way. Now, as opposed to this, <clears throat> in blooms, uh, frames are not neighbors. Here I'm showing you F at the upper right corner. That would be, say, a given frame in the animation. The frame before it is around it by 137 degrees to the left, and the frame after it is around it 137 degrees to the right. The, uh, it, it, it's also moved out a little bit as it moves forward, but the, but the point is that F, frame, you know, frame N and frame N plus 1 are not next to each other. They're quite far, far away from each other. And one of the ramifications of that is that neighboring frames are, are not, um, they're, they're not even close in terms of being in the, in the animation. So here we see one frame, and I've, I've surrounded it with a, a, a sort of description of how far away in the animation sequence each of the other um, cells is. So you can see that going left to right, they're 13 frames apart in terms of animation, and going top to bottom, they're 21 frames apart. 
and 1331 are, again, Fibonacci numbers, so that, that's perhaps not too surprising because that has to do with the number of spirals. The, but, but I thought this was kind of an interesting thing because it, it seemed to make, a, it seemed to offer potential for doing something interesting with an animation where the neighboring frames could have a relationship to each other based on the fact that they're 13 frames apart or 21 frames apart in the animation. <clears throat> What I should say, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you right now, I'm showing you sort of flat blooms. Most of my work has been in the, in, the, in the dimensional blooms, which we'll get to, but the flat blooms are sort of the starting point. So we're going to first look at the flat ones and then move on to the round, the, the, the more voluminous ones. So um, let's take a look here. Here's, say, frame one. Uh, and frame two is over here. And you can guess approximately where frame three would be, right down there, and frame four, and so on wrapping around it, and, and I populate the thing. Right now, I've populated it with 26 frames, which is 2 times 13 frames. And what I did is I made a 26-frame animation, which means if you look at any of the places where there's, uh, say, a, you know, so you can see that, that, that these are uh, 21, I don't know, 21 frames apart, and these are 13 frames apart. I made an animation where it was a 26, 6, 26 frame cyclic animation that would have a, a, a relationship at the 13th frame with its neighboring frame. That, that, that'll be clear as I show it to you. So this is the animation I made. Uh, and, um, and then I took that animation and, and replicated it um, into the smaller and smaller pieces so that it would cycle and repeat over and over again. And the idea here is then by spinning this and having, the, having it strobe, you end up with this, this sort of multi, multi, multiple animation happening at once. And I call this uh, bloom the telephone bloom because I'm playing telephone with myself, that game where, you, you know, where someone tells you a message and then you pass it on to them, and someone tells you and then you pass it on. So I, 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 that was the best thing I could think of to sort of demonstrate this notion of the frames having a relationship to each other, that they're not just independent frames, but they actually relate to each other. The, um, you may notice some of the distortion of things happening here. I've been lying to you a little bit. These are not done with a strobe light. These are actually done with a camera at 24 frames per second with this thing spinning real time, the camera going 24 frames per second and synchronized to the, sp and the speed of the disk synchronized to that with the camera using a very short shutter speed, one two thousandth of a second shutter speed in order to freeze the action. However, although it does freeze the action pretty well, it actually doesn't capture all the pixels at the same moment, and so there's a slight distortion occurring, you can see, um, in the shape of things. Uh, in an effort to show you one that doesn't have that distortion, I, I, I wanted to present you this GIF, and, and it works, but for some reason it's, it's operating much slower. This is not at full frame speed, but, you, but maybe it's just as well. You sort of get the slow motion sense of the, um, the endless game of telephone going on there. So just to be clear, what you're seeing there, although it's, it, it looks like it's a purely graphical construction, all I did was take one, that one image you see, this whole, this whole image, and rotate it, and, 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 and take a picture, rotate it, take a picture, rotate it, take a picture. OK, so we've been looking at uh, sort of flat versions of blooms. <clears throat> imagine if this, instead of being a flat disk, were, say, dome-shaped or spherical shape. You can imagine sort of mapping that shape on, map, mapping that uh, graphic onto that. And that's essentially what I've done for the, for the 3D blooms. And in addition to mapping that on, I've made each of the cells, or, or the frames of animation, into various, various shaped nodes. Uh, in this case, they're all kind of some kind of sort of appendage or petal-like thing. <clears throat> um, placed onto the surface, and then when it gets spun and animated, you get a um, you get this animation effect, this moving effect. <clears throat> I have to move out of there for a moment to show this. Ten more minutes. I'm sorry. Ten minutes. Great, thanks.
have Charlie Nordson to thank for making that, doing that wonderful job of, of editing and, and, and filming that whole thing. Um, and thanks to him, that video got quite a lot of play a few months ago. Um, so you might be, you might, wonder, you might be wondering, um, well, given that these are based on this five-based uh, structure is, is something that plants employ, um, and given that they have this ability to animate, might it not be the case that um, that uh, plant, you know, <laughs> these are examples of, that, of of plants that have this structure, and, and could they bloom? Could they could they animate? And in fact, the, the fact is, the answer is yes, they can. Um, Nature doesn't tend to be quite as concerned as I am about making things exactly symmetrical, so they don't tend to work quite as well. <laughs> but um, you'll see the general idea here happening with this artichoke, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. <clears throat> wobble, but I think you can see that there's this kind of sense of the leaves working their way up, and that was actually a double, double skipping every other leaf. This is every leaf. You get a little more wiggle, but it's a little slower pace. Um, put on a lathe, and um, I went to a, a nursery and spent about three hours going through every single one of their uh, succulents and cacti, trying to find the most symmetrical one I could find. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy, and I didn't completely succeed, but I got, oops, I should have animated. So if you watch one of the uh, areoles, you'll notice that it's working this way. It's working this way. What seems to be one? Mm -hmm. What seems to be one areole is actually every areole in sequence. Mm -hmm. And uh, same thing here. This is the same cac cactus from the side. It works pretty well down to about the halfway point, and then it got rather irregular. And you can see it kind of starts to shimmy. But, but, and this, by the way, this was not done real time. This was really rotated and, um, uh, and animated this, this one, one frame at a time. And one more cactus I'll show you. This is a hairier, hairier one. Good toothbrush. It didn't seem wise to do these by actually spinning them on a lathe. Simple <laughs> 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 advice. Uh, and then finally, I'll just like to show you, we, we can look at these later too when, when there's more time, um, an actual bloom. Because um, I often get questions like, does it really work in real life? Or you know, does it only work in video? Um, it's spinning up to speed now. And I apologize, I know it's a little small for those of you in the back. Um, it's overcome, I, I, my, my algorithm for getting it to come to proper speed is a little, is a little clumsy, so it takes a while to get to the right speed, but it should get that momentarily. And hopefully you're seeing an illusion of, of cues um, sort of rotating the speed all the way down. So the, the rotation of the cubes is the animation of the frames, but they're, um, they're each, but the structure here, the fundamental structure is the same as, as the, the originating uh, image that I showed you of that spiral tacking. So uh, thank you very much. Um, any questions?